development and movie making and stuff with the training center and all that good stuff. Great job. Yeah. Woo, woo. Thank you. Do you guys like the new training center? Yeah. It's pretty sweet. The fact that it works on a cell phone makes me real happy. <laughs> right on. Well, today it is my pleasure to introduce you guys to Magali Preston. She is a superstar director out of Texas. And she is going to be talking to you today about your business growth cycle. Take it away. All righty then. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to start with a show of hands. How many of you were here for leadership this week? Okay, good. Good. The rest of you, you need to plan that for next year. Um, I think it was extremely important for me to be here before reunion. Um, and it's crazy because everything that we were taught, well, not everything, almost a lot of the things that we were taught at leadership the first two days were already somehow incorporated into my presentation. So I thought, okay, this is good. This is reassuring. I think I'm on the right track. Um, so yes, leadership is very, very, very important. Um, and I think that if you uh, were not here this year, you really think about trying to implement that next year. Um, also show of hands, just because I wanna get a feel for the room to see who's here. Um, if you are a director, can you raise your hand for me, please? Okay, this is good. Us. Yes, please. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. If anyone needs French translation, just raise your hand, and we have translators in the back of the room that are ready to help you guys out. So, French translation, just raise your hand. No, you're good. No. Okay, so I got directors. Um, star directors. Okay, good. Superstar directors? Okay, good. All right. Um, so, how many of you rode a roller coaster this week? <laughs> You did? Okay. How did it make you feel? Happy. Happy? Scared. Scared. Alive. Alive? What else? Excited. Excited? Nervous. Dizzy, right? You felt like, okay, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Why am I on this thing, right? Like, I, I, don't like dizziness. I don't like being not having control. You guys, I got on Space Mountain, <laughs> and I was so scared. I was like, "Oh my God, what am I doing?" But let me tell you, this is kind of like my emotions. Okay, so I was freaking out. I was like, "Why am I doing this?" I got in there and once like we got in, I'm like, why is it so dark? And my friends are like, because the whole thing is dark. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I couldn't see where I was going and, and I had no control whatsoever. I, I couldn't dodge the bullet. You know, like when you see the curve coming, you kind of like lean towards, I couldn't see anything. So the first 10 seconds, I was freaking out. And I thought to myself, okay, what can I do? What can I do? I need to gain control of this because I'm gonna puke. <laughs> and you know what I did? I closed my eyes. It was dark, I couldn't see anything, right? But me closing my eyes gave me the control that I couldn't see. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I was like, just closing my eyes and I thought, okay, I can't see this, I can't see this, but it's because I'm choosing not to see this. It's not because somebody is telling me that I can't see this, right? So our Sensi business is kind of like that. And I hope that in the next 45 minutes, you guys get to experience a little bit of the experience that you get when you're on a roller coaster. Yes, it's gonna be exciting. It is gonna be dizzy. You are gonna to wanna to throw up at times, right? Because we go through the ups and downs and that's just a part of it. That's just what it is. So one of the things I wanna say, this is the hardest topic I have ever had to present on. And when um, corporate asked me to present on the business cycle, I thought, do you really want me to talk about this? Like, do you know what I have gone through and what I go through? every three months, every six months, like, this is hard. And I have wanted to quit 
so many times. I want to quit every month, honestly, right? It's, it's just, and, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm going to tell them like it is. I'm going to share with them, you know, how I try to just go back up the roller coaster on a monthly basis, on a six month basis, on a year month basis. So this is really, really one of the hardest ones. And it's very emotional for me because I have been in those lows and I have cried many, many times and I have to find a way to just keep going. So hopefully you guys can relate um, to this. The fact that you're in this room leads me to believe that you've been in my shoes at least once or twice, right? Um, your business sucks. You're struggling. Your PWB is down. Your TWB is down. You're losing your director title. You've lost your director title. You're losing directors. Um, you aren't being paid a title. You're losing more team members than you're bringing in. You're experiencing crickets on your team page. No one is having parties. You guys have tried everything, right? Or have you? Right? We always think, but I've done everything. Have you really done everything? You possibly can. Okay? I've been with Sunsi almost eight years. Um, and like I said, my business is a roller coaster. It goes up, it goes down. It's frustrating, it's disappointing, it's stressful, it's heartbreaking. But it's also thrilling, it's exciting, it's adventurous, it's very rewarding. So, just a little back note. It took me two years to make my director title, but then I lost it. Okay, I went back to Superstar Consultant. Um, nobody, nobody wanted to join my team. Um, I, it took me two years to earn my very first incentive. It took me almost a year to sponsor my first recruit. Um, I didn't have an upline. I didn't have a family. I didn't have a group. And I think, honestly, it was because I chose that because it was there, but I just chose not to participate. So I, I can't blame my upline. It was my choice. Um, so long story short, 2014, I had been in Sunsea for four years and I was quitting. Um, I, I had had enough. I, it was crazy. I had just gotten back from an incentive trip, which was Hawaii. And I was going to reunion just to say bye to my friends because I had already paid for my ticket and paid for my hotel and everything. Um, so I was just going to go say goodbye to them. Um, it was very difficult for me to do that. Um, that summer, I remember my paycheck was $17. Um, I had three jobs, of course a husband, I had two babies, there were like three and four at the time. Um, I was moving from New Mexico to Texas. I had all the excuses. I had every single reason to quit, but I didn't. And you guys want to know why I didn't quit? All right, I want everybody to stand up. All right, so. Um, you may, oh yeah, I was going to say, you may need to put your phones down for this, but you don't have to. Okay. I want you guys to fold your arms, like if you're bored or just waiting for something to happen. Okay, everybody fold your arms. Okay. Now, unfold them and fold them the other way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, you guys can sit down. <laughs> so how did it feel when I asked you to do that? It's weird, right? It's like strange, like, wait a minute, am I, do I do it this way? Do I do it that way? <coughs> it, 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 did it come naturally? No. Did you have to stop and think about what you were doing? Was it comfortable? No. It's not comfortable, huh? So what are some of the things, this is, you know, I'm just thinking, what are some of the things that are, that make us resistant to change? It's all of this stuff, right? Like we, we, it's uncomfortable, we have to stop, think about it, we do it, we realize, wait a minute, that's not the way you're supposed to do it, you try to do it a different way. What I'm trying to get at is, we have to embrace change, okay? So change is like the word. That's what I'm trying to get at, changes. 
The summer of 2014, everything changed for me. And that is why I didn't quit, because of the changes. My attitude changed, okay? So I went from a glass half empty to a glass, a glass half full. Um, I went from, I'm moving to a new market, I'm not gonna know anybody, I, nobody's gonna wanna host a party for me, you know, I, I might as just well quit, to I'm moving to a new market. Hello, I'm moving to a new market. I have a whole new market to go after. I have people that probably have never heard of Sensi before. I'm moving to a new neighborhood where no one knew, well now I know that no one knew Sensi, but example, Albuquerque, where I used to live, I sponsored probably about six of my neighbors. Okay, when I moved to San Antonio, I already have I think four or five of my neighbors in my Sensi team. Like we just have to think of the positive and not the negative, okay? So your attitude. Um, rather than being scared um, and afraid, you just have to see the opportunities um, and just start over. There's nothing wrong with starting <coughs> over. Okay, my belief. Okay, that was a big one. My belief changed. I went from I can't do this to I can do this, right? I, I've got this, it's not a big deal, you can start over. My goals changed, okay? And, and when I was writing this, I thought, who am I kidding? I had never really written down goals, right? I'm like, my goals changed, no. I actually made goals. <coughs> so I had been in this business for, what was it, maybe four years, and I had never made a goal. I had never planned anything. I had, like, it was just kind of happening, right? So then, of course, you reach director and you don't have goals. Well, we know what happens when we don't have goals and we are leading a team. <coughs> it all goes down the drain. So we're gonna talk about goals in a little bit. Um, I began to dream. My determination kicked in. My why changed. We all know about our whys and the importance of our whys, so I'm not gonna go into that, but you have to have a very emotional, logical, positive goal that you can resonate with your heart. So that's, that's, you have to have a why. And the most important thing is I asked for help. I asked for help. I finally <coughs> realized that I couldn't do this on my own, okay? Um, yes, it was uncomfortable. It was out of my comfort zone. Um, it was not easy, but I was open-minded. I was willing to learn and accept rejection, okay? Because we will fail, you will fail. Every single step of this business cycle requires you to fail. And that's the only way you're gonna learn and that's the only way you're gonna grow. So you need to accept that you're gonna fail. Um, so that summer, everything changed. In the fall, I regained my director title. The next fall, I became a star director. The next fall, I became a superstar director. And that all happened because I decided to change, and I changed everything. So, um, something that somebody said yesterday or the other day, I need to write, tell you guys this. Okay, so all change is hard at first, messy in the middle, and so gorgeous at the end. Isn't that awesome? I don't know, somebody said that this week, and I don't know where that came from. And then Orville said yesterday, uh, we need to focus on what we should do, not on what we can do. That's also very powerful for me. Um, a negative mind will never give you a positive life, so our mind, right? We can control our own actions, but we can't control the actions of others. Um, so don't set goals based on others' actions. You're gonna wanna set goals based on your own actions. All right, so. I hate, I'm so nervous, you guys. Okay, so, thank you. Okay, so I want you guys to do something right now. I want you to grab your phone, and I want you to, to do this exercise for me, um, because this is one of the things, this is, I think, this is what I, this is the primary reason why I did not quit that summer, okay? Um, so I want you to, to, to do this with me. Uh, and before you go into this negative state of mind, because I know you all will, I actually, when they asked me to do this, I got up and I was ready to go to the bathroom. And my friend Kelly Cano said, sit here down and you're gonna do this with me, 
okay? Um, so, I want you just to think about why you're here, why you've invested all the money to be here, your time, you know, your energy. You guys want to be successful. You want to make a difference. You guys want to make money. And what needs to happen for that? You need to change and you need to be open-minded, okay? So, I want you to grab your phone and I want you to take a selfie of yourself with either the people in your row or people behind you. I just want like a selfie and I need to grab mine because I need to do the same thing. <laughs> so I want you to take a selfie, like I'm not kidding, for real, everybody, like seriously do this. <laughs> yep, say cheese. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody has their selfie. Yeah? Everybody grab a selfie. Okay, so here it goes. And I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you time to do this because I think it's very, very important. But with a smile and a positive attitude, because people can see that, whether you think they can't, they do. I want you to text, yes, I want you to text at least 10 of your customers right now. Oh my goodness. Yes, you're texting your customers right now, and you better have your customers' phone numbers in your phone, and if you don't, that's the first thing you need to start doing. Your customers should be on your cell phone, okay? I use an app, yes ma'am? Yeah, you took your selfie. You're gonna text 10 of your customers right now. Okay, I'm coming, okay. I'll tell you what you're gonna say. But here's the number with, I use an app called Hit 'Em Up, okay? <laughs> now with Maven, um, it you know it can be different. I'm gonna just I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say this. My life this summer has been very very crazy. I don't know what Maven is. <laughs> yes, yes. I've heard. I've heard. So full disclosure, you know, it's we can't do everything all the time. Priorities. I'm sorry, the summer is for my family, the summer is for my kids, the summer is when I travel and I do what I love to do, which is my why for why I'm here. So I will get to Maven <laughs> as soon as I can. All right. So I use Hit 'em Up. Hit 'em Up works great for me, right? Um, I have all of my customers um, on my cell phone and I, you know, save them as. Oh, somebody just sent me. Wait, can I know who Anna yeah, she's just sending her little picture to everybody. <laughs> All right, so here's what I want you guys to do. Yes. With a positive attitude, okay? And, and the easiest way to do this, and you guys probably already know this, like whenever you're going to text somebody, okay, there's like a little microphone on your text message, and you can just like voice text them, and it'll type it out for you. So you guys don't have to like manually type everything, right? And it, or, or, and it uses my guru when it comes to all that stuff. Okay, so you're gonna text these people and say, hi Jennifer, and you don't have to verbatim, but here it goes. Hi Jennifer, this is Magali Preston, your Sensi lady. I am currently in California at our yearly convention, and I'm being challenged in front of all of my friends to book at least one Sensi party, a bingo, a part, whatever you guys want to insert in there. All you have to do is invite your friends over. I'll bring the game, the prizes, all the sensey stuff. I've had a few of these and they're so much fun. Do they need to know that you've never done this before? No. No. You tell them you've done it before and they're a blast. Okay. Can you help me out? Call of action. You need to ask them for help. Right? So if you just send that, they're going to be like, huh, she just sent, sent it. Would the weekend of August the 4th work for you? Give them a date. Okay, give them a date because then they're going to be like, well, that doesn't work for me. But maybe the 16th will work for me, right? So you want to give them a date, have them think about that date, and maybe think of another day that would work for them. Don't forget to add, almost everything's 10% off in August, okay? So, give them your special. 
Can I count on you? You want to let them know that you're counting on them to help you out. And then you end with, please say yes. The pressure is on. All my sensey friends are waiting for your response. Okay? So, I want you guys to do that five minutes or so. Text your people. And let's see how, and I'm going to do it too. Let's see how many people we can get um, to book a party. Now, let me tell you what I'm doing. Because I use my Hit 'em Up app, guess what I do? I can send 50, 60, 70 text messages in five minutes. Because all I just click, 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 click. So that's part of having a system that works for you, right? That is a system that works for me. I believe that Maven does something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, that you just like send messages to everybody real quick or something. Okay. Um, so while you guys finish doing that, let me tell you, that summer um, that I went to reunion to quit, we did the very first booking blitz. Um, that's where everybody was asked to do what I'm asking you guys to do. And Kelly's like, um, no, sit down. I said, Kelly, I'm quitting. Like, why do I have to do this? Like, I'm, I don't, nobody's going to book a party with me. Are you kidding me? Why do you think I'm quitting? Because nobody wants to book a party with me. She's like, sit down. If you don't do it, I'm not going to do it. And I really need this. And I was like, damn it. Okay, so I sat down. I texted. I don't remember how many people. You guys, I booked four parties. Wow. I booked four parties. And of course I got home and I was like, well, I'm gonna have to tell them that they're gonna have to find another sensey person to do their party because I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, towards the end of reunion, of course my whole perspective changed because the day after that was when Sensi announced that they were going into Mexico and that's when my why changed. And I was like, okay, this is not about me, it's about helping others, making a difference in the life of other people. I have friends, I have family that could use the opportunity. You see, I noticed I didn't have a strong enough why, and that's why I was quitting. So then my why changed, and that's why I stayed. Now, did my why really make a difference in that first year of me becoming a star director? No. Did Mexico boom? No. Did I sponsor? Yes. Did they stay? No. Did I hit star director because of that? No. But why did I hit star director? Because I booked four parties. Because I booked four parties and I started to show my US team the difference that it made when you asked, when you believed that you could do this, right? I don't know where I was going with that. Okay. So, um, all right, we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, so um, I started to believe in myself I can do this. All right, perfect. That's the, that's the number one thing, okay? Booking Blitz saved my business. That helped me go from the low of the business cycle to the up. So as often as you can, have these Booking Blitz with your team. And if you guys can do it you know, in a team meeting, that's great. If you guys can do it on Zoom, that's great. I believe that it's very, very powerful um, to have these kinds of, I guess, challenges, if you want to call them, because it will make a difference. A lot of the time people are just afraid to ask, but when we as their leader give them the example and we do it with them, then it's easier for them to do it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, number two, so the, the, these are kind of the things that I did to help me or the things that I do to help me get out of my cycles. Um, number two, and this is so important, we have to remember that we are in this company, in this business, um, and we're not alone, okay? For the longest time, I felt alone. For the longest time, I had no friends. I went to my very first incentive trip, and I didn't have any friends. I didn't talk to anybody. Um, it was my husband and I, and we were on our honeymoon. It was like nothing. It wasn't until the very last night, sitting at the bar, mm -hmm. where I met my very first sensi friend. And that is what changed everything, right? She, her and her friends incorporated me, and I mean, now we're roommates, we're always roommates. Um, and that was, what, six years ago? So 
always, always remember that you're not alone, okay? Um, you're gonna want to surround yourself with like-minded people, and there's so many apps for that. There's, you know, the whole Marco Polo, you can start a messenger, um, a messenger group on Facebook, um, you can do WhatsApp. I, I belong to like 15 groups in WhatsApp. Um, you can start it with your bootcamp friends. You can start it with other consultants in your community that are not even in your group or in your team. It doesn't matter. You just want to surround yourself with Sensi sisters that all have the same intentions, that all have the same goals, that all have the same dreams. Okay? So, here's another challenge for you guys. Are you ready? And remember, change is uncomfortable. Change is scary. Change is, you're, you don't have control of the situation, right? Okay. I want you guys in your rows to form a little group on Messenger, on WhatsApp, wherever you want. But I want you to make, I want you to make little groups. Why? Because all of you are in here for the same reason. So how awesome would it be to in the morning just wake up and say hey let me let me just share with you real quick this is what i'm doing today and you know what if anna is having a bad day and Nick just says hey this is what i'm doing today what are you doing what do you think is going to happen and it's going to be like oh well yeah maybe i should do that too right it's so important to build that tribe build that community when i did that with different groups. So I have my boot camp friends, I have my incentive friends. It makes a big difference because there are ups and downs and there's gonna be days when you're gonna wake up and just be like, I don't wanna do this anymore. And you share that and then you have like three or four people, well, what do you mean? But you have to and you know, so having these little groups and these little communities are really, really <coughs> important. Um, so if you do not belong to a group of, again, it can be anybody, bootcamp friends, friends, people in your row. You want to make sure that you're always going to be somehow connected to other people that are thinking exactly the same thing that you're thinking. Okay. Um, oh, this is a good one. Okay. <laughs> this is hard. You're going to want to shed all those people from your life that are negative. Those excuse throwers, those party poopers. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, like, I, I've done this, you know? I have had sensey friends who just can't get out of the drama, funk, whatever you want to call it. And I have literally told them, you know what? I'm sorry, dude. I just can't. You're not bringing me down. And this is very hard to do. But until they're ready to get on your roller coaster that is going up, let them fall off. Okay? This is the hardest thing that you're going to do in this business. <laughs> and it's funny because I was thinking, I don't know, who, where did I get this? I. Somebody in one of my chats sent me something and she said, oh, this is funny. She said, do you know what you do when people are talking behind your back? Because we know that happens, right? You just fart. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know what? That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm just going to be farting away. So, okay. So that's, that's again, I said it was going to be hard. It was going to be challenging, right? you are going to have to eliminate those people from your life. Okay. Um, let me see. What else? We, and we all, yes, please. Nick says she's going to make a word slag out of that, and she'll just drop it to you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so comparison, competition, envy, this is not good, okay? You will not enjoy your sexy life. You guys know this. Um, unless you change your surroundings, you're never going to go up. You will never be on the front row of that roller coaster. Um, so make a change, talk sensey every day with like-minded people. Okay, that's my number two. Number three, this is huge for me. The day that I acknowledged that this was a business, everything changed, okay? I'm not saying that you have to work 
eight hours a day on your Scentsy business. All you have to do is work 8% of your day on Scentsy business. And do you know what 8% of your day is? One hour. One hour. If you work your Scentsy business one hour a day consistently, that's a business. But there's no point in working your business one day of the week not work half a day every three days. No, every single day you have to work your business. How do you do that? You have to have a system, okay? I hear Maven is perfect for this, okay? But if you're like me and you are not Maven savvy, okay? This is my system. It's just a worksheet, not a big deal. And it's divided into weeks. I have week one, week two, week three, week four. It tells me what I need to do that week. I'm not twiddling around, wondering what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not looking on Facebook what everybody else is doing. Why do I care what everybody else is doing? Okay, create a system that works for you, okay? Um, Post monthly incentive, post birthdays, anniversaries, promote the warmer of the month, share a tip, do your recognition posts, welcome new team members, congratulate your sponsors, send thank you texts to your PW orders, text to the will cancels, reach out to potential consultants, team members, customers, everything is here. It's, it's a sheet that just tells me, and then I put little check marks whenever it's done. Guess how long it takes me to do all the activities that are on my week one, maybe a total of eight hours, one hour a day. So you have to have a system. Don't waste your time on Facebook. You guys, I was the girl that I would sit in front of my computer all day long because I, I could do that because I don't have another job. My kids are in school. I don't like to clean and I don't like to cook. So <laughs> the best thing for me to do is just sit in front of my computer, right? I don't like to exercise and I don't like to go have coffee with my friends. Like I'm an introvert and I like to sit at home. So I would sit at home and my husband would come and be like, you work way too much. And I'm like, yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> Cause I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't being productive. I was just sitting there chit-chatting with my friends. Once in a while I would click on Netflix, but he thought I was in my office working. <laughs> no. So now I decided, you know what? I need to make a change. I need to like start living and get out, get out there. So my excuse of I have so much work to do is kind of gone because this is all I really have to do. Okay, so have a spreadsheet, have something that tells you what you are going to be doing. Now, there's no point in having this and keeping it all to yourself like, oh, this is my secret. I'm not gonna tell anybody what I'm doing. No, share it with your people. And I, I would be more than happy, I'll post this on the director page when I get home, you guys download it, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Fix it, change it, whatever, but it's just like a starting point for you guys. That's totally fine with me. Share your system with your team. Show them what you're doing, because guess what happens? <coughs> they will follow. We leaders have to lead by example. We can't ask our team to go and talk to five potential consultants if we're not doing it ourselves. So show them and say, hey, today I'm talking to five potential consultants and this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm talking to them. This is verbatim the words that I am telling them. Okay, so when we lead by example, our team will follow. Okay? Um, the fifth thing that I do or did to kind of get out of my funk is set goals. And we talked about setting goals, right? Um, I never had goals. I was just kind of like winging it at first. Um, but I do. I have, I set my annual plan. So before when we had leadership in January, that was kind of like, okay, this is, that's when I would set my annual plan goals for the year, the whole thing. Well, now that we have it in the middle of the summer, things are going to have to change a little bit. But um, sit down with your spouse, right? Um, this should be something that you guys plan together. If, 
if he sees <coughs> what you're trying to do, if you know what his dreams or what he wishes that we could get out of this business is, um, that just kind of helps you with your business and your marriage, honestly, because you want to make sure that he understands that you're working this business for the family, not just for you. Um, but anyway, have yearly goals. It's very important, right? Your yearly goals are, you know, I want to earn annual sales. I want to earn annual mentor. I want to earn the incentives. Those are your yearly goals. Like, that is what you're going to be working on all year long, okay? You want to have your monthly goals. And what are some monthly goals that we can have? Or wait, what are some, is there any other yearly goals that you guys can think of? Team growth th throughout the year, okay? Any, any other yearly goals? Incentive trips, mm-hmm. Okay, monthly goals. Monthly goals for me is I wanna beat last year's numbers, right? So I wanna go back and see what did I do July of 2017, I wanna beat that. So that's like a monthly goal. A monthly goal could also be, you know, I need to get my 2000 PRB every single month. You guys, because honestly, as directors, and, and I know some of you are going to be like, yeah, right. Some of you as directors hit, you, you guys believe that your monthly goal is $500. That is so wrong. Your monthly goal should be $2,000 every single month, okay? Your goal to sponsor, a lot of you think, well, if I sponsor one person every three months, I'm good. No, no, no. You're supposed to be sponsoring two people a month. If you sell $2,000, if you sponsor two people every month, in two years, your business is going to go from here to here. Okay? But you have to set your goals high. If you're not setting your goals high, guess what your team is doing? They're not setting their, their goals high either. If you tell them, oh yeah, you know, my goal is to book a party this month. So what do you think they're gonna do? Well, if she's only having one party and she's a director, then I guess I'm not having any parties. No, you tell them, uh, my goal is to book four parties so that you hope that they at least book one, okay? Set your goals high. Don't be afraid, you know, and if you don't hit it, well, you don't hit it, but you set your goal high. Um, you want to have weekly goals, right? This is a weekly goal to get all those check marks, right? Set your weekly goals. Um, for example, like I even, these are my other weekly goals. Let's see, my, I, I write down the five potential consultants I'm going to talk to. I communicate um, and have one-on-ones with five team members. I call, not text, call five customers a week just to check up, not to ask them if they want anything, just to check up. Um, I do five customer mail-outs a week, and that could be, you know, the monthly special or, hey, look what's new, and right now, you guys, we have so many new things to talk about, right? Um, I do five monthly or five weekly mail outs to my team. So I just kind of like go through Facebook and see what they're doing. And if I see somebody's doing something cool, I send them a postcard. Hey, congratulations. I saw that you're working your business. Um, and then I do five recognition postcards a week. And that could be, you know, their birthdays, their anniversaries and all that stuff. So everything is in writing and I know exactly what I need to do. So that's my weekly goals. Just get through the week, do your stuff and move on. And then um, I do have daily goals, right? So today I have to go deliver my orders. Mm -hmm. Today I have to listen to the training calls on the workstation today. So you want to have daily, weekly, monthly, yearly goals. And you're going to want to visit them frequently, right? Because our goals change. Our goals can change on a monthly basis. Our goals can change on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. Goals change. So I don't know if, if this helped you um, a little bit. I know if I was here for the earlier session um, and they were so professional. <laughs> <laughs> they had all these slides and the business cycle and the ups and the downs and I was like, oh my goodness, that is so not me. 
Um, but one thing, I'm, I'm going to share something that they did have that I don't, I didn't have, is, um, so they put a slide that says the five life cycles of a Sensi business, and this is so, so true. So uh, we start off as director, right? And then we go to, and you're in that moment of, yes, I hit director, this is awesome. Then you go into the DQ and you're like, crap, all that work. And now I'm back to superstar consultant. You guys, a title is a title and it doesn't mean anything, okay? We are all leaders regardless of our title. I have a couple, a handful of directors that have, that are my roller coaster directors, right? They go up and down every fall, they're a director, every spring, they're superstar consultant. Ask me if I ever have taken, I, how do I say this? Like taken them off of their, taken their leadership hat off. Never. Their team, unless they tell them, have no idea that they've lost their title. They are still their director. They are still the ones that communicate with them on a daily basis, weekly basis, whatever it is. They are still the director. So when somebody hits that superstar consultant phase, we as leaders should not think of them any differently, okay? So if you are in here and you're about to go back down to superstar consultant, right now, change your mind, get that negativity out. Oh, I lost my title. Who cares? You don't need a title to perform and you don't need a title to be a leader. Okay. So then we get back up to director and we're like, okay, I did it again. And you're like, Oh, I got a first director. <gasps> oh my God, this is, this is working. And then you're kind of stuck there and stuck there. And you're like, I need one more director and I need one more director. Then you get that director and you're like, Oh my God, I hit star director, right? So now you have your two directors. And then what happens? You get your third director and then you're there for five years. <laughs> and you're like, I just need one more, right? And throughout this business cycle, it's up and down and up and down. And that is where we have to decide. And that's where our mindset comes in that we just need to figure out what we're going to do to keep that roller coaster going up, okay? because it will go down, it's gonna turn, you are gonna wanna throw up, you're gonna, like all that stuff happens, okay? So, um, I just wanna end it with this because I thought it was cute. Remain seated, facing forward, in a positive and upright position, hold on tight because this ride will never end. <laughs> You booked five parties? Woo, you got four? You got two? You got two? You got three? Oh my god, I just got goosebumps. You got parties? You got a reinstatement at a party? You got two? Oh my god, you guys have goosebumps. Five and five? Three? Holy crap, you guys, we booked almost 50 parties. Eight? Wow. You 